Good morning, church family, and welcome back to Online Sunday School. I'm so glad that you joined us this morning. It's Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. We're so excited to be worshiping the risen Savior today. And today we're going to jump in and continue on in Romans in our Sunday School lesson. But before I do that, I just want to encourage you with this word that, you know, back on the actual weekend when Christ gave his life on Good Friday and then into the weekend that Saturday night and that, that early Sunday morning, the disciples were much like we are today. We're all in our houses and, and we've been there now for several weeks and many of us are, are feeling the weight of just uh, this crisis that's going on through, through the pandemic that we're facing and we're feeling the weight of having to uh, socially distance from one another and the, the isolation of staying inside and and the disciples felt that weight of, of not knowing what was going to happen next. They, they saw the, their leader. They saw Jesus crucified. They scattered after he was arrested. They went and hid, not knowing what the future might hold, wondering if everything that, that they had followed for the past three years was, was all gone and, and wondered if, if Jesus was gone forever. But then Sunday morning came. Then the resurrection happened. Then Jesus brought hope to them. And he changed everything. And that same hope that Christ brought the disciples who were in their homes, locked away, the same hope that brought them out, gave them purpose in life, the same hope is true for us today. And while we're still facing this together, while we still have days, weeks, who knows how much longer to go before we can go back to how life was. We still have hope in Christ. He gives us a hope. He gives us a purpose through all of this. And so today you may be feeling the weight of everything that is happening, our circumstances today. But know that Jesus brings us hope. Know that we are all facing the weight together. Know that we're all going through this together. But Jesus brings us hope. Let's pray now we'll look some more at Romans chapter 6 today, okay? Father, thank you so much for your word to us, for speaking to us, especially in times like today, when we face so much of a heavy burden, a heavy weight, so many unknown things coming to us, things that change rapidly, it seems. Father, thank you for your word to us, to speak to us through that. Jesus, thank you for your sacrifice on the cross. Thank you for your resurrection that we celebrate today that brings us hope, that changes everything. Holy Spirit, thank you for speaking to us through the word, for teaching us. Open our hearts, guide us through today. In your name, amen. Now, we're picking up in our Sunday school lesson today uh, where we left off last time. We were the first half of Romans chapter 6 and today we're picking up in the second half of that in verses 15 through 23. So let's read that together. Why don't you grab your Bible? Let's read along. We're in Romans again. Chapter 6 verses 15 through 23. Paul writes this. What then? Are we to sin because we are not under law but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed, and having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness." I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at that time from the things of which you were now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So 
Paul is continuing on in Romans chapter 6. He's continuing on this thought that he began that we looked at last week. And remember, he's been building this progression all throughout the letter of, of Romans, uh, leading into uh, going from sin and, and describing the problem all the way up until what it means to live life in Christ. So Paul's been building this progression. Let's look at this together. We've got some slides here. Paul's been building the progression of man's position. We we're, were separated from God because of sin. And he uses the first few chapters in Romans to describe that. And then he begins to talk about God's provision. God sends Christ to be the atoning sacrifice for our sin. We could not overcome that on our own. Only through Christ and, and His perfect sacrifice through His sinless life is there a way for us to have the righteousness of God, for God's righteousness to be put on us through faith in what Jesus has done. Remember that word justification? Jesus justifies us through His sacrifice on the cross. He makes us right with God when we put our faith in what He has done. That's God's provision. And that leads us to the path to take. Will we put faith in Christ? Will we commit our life to following Christ? That's the path to take. We see that now, and that's what Paul is presenting. That's what Paul says is, is next. We see what God has provided for us. Now, the path to take, the path to choose is, will you put your faith in Christ? And when that happens, that brings us the peace of God. It changes our life. Not only does it bring eternal life, but it gives us a peace with God that now we see life differently. We are now under grace when we see everything in life, the joys, the pains, from a different perspective. And then from there, it brings us a purpose in life. And that's where we saw last week, Paul then says, well, now what? Now, so since we're, since we're under grace, since we're now the righteousness of God, do we just get to sin and do whatever? And he says, by no means. Now we have a new life in Christ. We have now a new purpose in life. And what he's doing in the next half of this chapter that, the, that we just read is he's continuing to describe this. He's continuing to elaborate on this now what question. In fact, he reiterates it in verse 15. That's how we start. He says, what then? Are we to sin because we're not under law? And then he says again, like he said in verse 2, he repeats, by no means. So he's continuing on this, but he's uh, instead of where we saw last week, he, he describes baptism and being united in Christ, walking in the newness of life. Now he goes and he turns to a different perspective where he talks about lordship, who you're following, who someone follows in life. You know, in fact, I mean, he, he, he talks about this. He sets the, 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 the two pictures out. You know, we were once slaves to sin, but now... You're slaves to righteousness. This is, this, is where, this is who you used to follow, but now we're following Christ. And he, he describes it even more. And he talks about this even in verse 20 when he, he talks about how you were slaves of sin. You were free in regard of righteousness. He, he's saying before you were following sin and you were free from this idea of righteousness. But, but, but what did that lead to? What was the old path? The, the old path had no fruit. It led to death. And that's the picture that Paul is trying to paint here. I mean, before in the, in the first half of the chapter, he's um, talking about what new life means. It's new life in Christ. We're united with Christ. And now he's looking back and he's saying, why would you want to go back to the old way of life? To what you used to follow that led to death that was fruitless. Why would you want to go back to that old path? Now he's saying, and he's urging them, he's challenging the Romans. Now the path to take is to follow Christ, is to be obedient, to be a slave to righteousness. And he's not trying to say this in, in, in a way that it, it's a weight or it, it's a burden, but he's saying that now our lives are moving towards Christ. And he uses this word, and he's describing what we call sanctification. Notice in verse 22, Paul says this, that the fruit you get leads to sanctification and to its end, eternal life. Now, sanctification is a word that comes from uh, the root sanctify, which means to set apart, to be separate. Uh, it's, a, it's also a word that, that we associate with the word holy, set apart. And this is something God was doing with his people and the people of Israel back in the Old Testament. But now Paul talks about sanctification. When we follow Christ, 
we receive the fruit of sanctification. And what that means is the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives, in the lives of those that follow Jesus, He works in us to set us apart, to make us more like Christ. That's what that word sanctification means. Becoming more and more in the image of Jesus, which is not just something that makes us look different or sets us apart so that we can feel better. It, it's, it's not about that at all. It's about the work of the Holy Spirit helping us to become more like Christ, which is what God has designed us to be. That's the life that God desired for us. And that's what it was like before sin even entered the world. That's what sin did to, the, to us in the image of God. It changed what God desired for us to be. It left us broken. It left us wanting. In fact, Paul writes this verse in Romans 6.23. We talked about this last week. A great way to describe the gospel, to present salvation to someone. It says, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. He is saying that what we earn through our sin is death, separation from God, man's position. Remember, we saw that just a minute ago. But the gift of God is eternal life. To Christ Jesus our Lord. God's provision, what God has given to us as a gift, is life through Jesus, eternal life. But as we see this in this perspective of Romans chapter 6, in the context of the whole chapter, that has the meaning of salvation. Romans 6.23, it still refers to the gospel, but it also has a deeper meaning that we're going to open up in just a little bit. And so we see what, what Remember our questions that we answer through Bible study. What does God say to them, the original audience? And what does God say to everyone? Principles of the text, number three. What is God saying to me? Personal application. Well, that, that first question, what Paul is saying to the Romans here, what God says to them. As Christ followers pursue the Lord more, not only do they become more like Jesus, but they experience the life that God has designed for them. And Paul's trying to say that. He, he, he's laying out for the Romans here. Now that we have new life in Christ, it is now time for us to, the path that we take is towards Him. We follow Him. He is our Lord. So that's what God says to them. But, but what does God say to everyone? And this question is not just for the Romans, but it's for anyone that reads this. They face this question and a question for us today as well. Who are you following in life? So as we look at the question, what does God say to everyone? And we try to break that down. The first question we ask ourselves, and anyone that would read this, who are you following in life? Paul says that before Christ we were slaves to sin, but now we should be slaves of righteousness. Is that true in your life? But notice something very, very important here. This is foundational to this. Notice what Paul says. In verse 17. But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed. Obedient to the heart. Paul makes this clear. This is a principle of the text, what God is saying to everyone, that following Christ begins in the heart. Remember, if you remember, if you the past few weeks we've talked about Deuteronomy and the law of God and what God presented to the people of Israel before they went to the promised land in Deuteronomy. He says over and over again, repeats in that book, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. He starts with love the Lord your God with all of your heart. It's always been about that. God desires a relationship. He wants us to love Him with our heart. It starts in the heart. It's not just about following a set of rules or some religious code, but God desires a relationship with us. Reading the Bible, praying our prayer life, meditating on the truth, when we praise Him, sharing a testimony, serving Him, it's all about ways that we live in relationship with Him. It starts from our heart. We're not just pursuing God here, but we're pursuing God with our heart. These are ways that we personally express our worship to God. That's how we worship Him personally. We must see Jesus as following this 
excuse me, we must see following Jesus as this, a relationship that leads to life. Those that do not have faith in him see following Christ as a restriction, something that that binds us, takes away our freedom. But that freedom, Paul says that in here, but that freedom only leads to death. It's fruitless. It ultimately leaves us wanting and empty. Those that follow Christ must see living life for him, not as a duty or some obligation, but a way for us to walk with him and experience the real life that God desires. It's not just about eternal life. While that is the gift of God to us, it's also about life here and now. So here's a question I have for you for that we can discuss, that either you can discuss um, amongst your family, maybe something you can write down and consider, or if you've got folks that you're meeting online with in your Sunday school groups, what motivates you to express worship to God on a personal level? What leads you to pray? Why do you pray? Why do you read your Bible? Why do you meditate on the truth? Why do you share the gospel? It's an important question for us to consider. Because we see Paul in verse 17 examining the heart, starting at the heart. We even see that through what Jesus says in the greatest commandment, which is an echo of what God says in Deuteronomy. Now finally, what is God saying to me? This is our third question that we look at in Bible study, the personal application. What is God saying to me? And what God is speaking to me and and what I'm praying that he is speaking to you through the Holy Spirit is that God desires a relationship with me. He desires a relationship. It's not about doing good things to make him happy or to make myself feel better. But through Christ, God gives us life. He gives us eternal life, and he also gives us real life, a life that brings us joy and blessing right now. We see that in the context of this chapter. We see Romans 6.23 as having that deep meaning that God gives us eternal life, but he also gives us life, a real life apart from sin today. Now, I wanted to share my testimony, just briefly my story of how I came to know God, how I came to faith in Christ. When I was young, I went to vacation Bible schools a lot. And that was something I did. And so I, I, I knew a lot about God. Uh, I did, I, you know, I was four, five, six years old, and I went to several what we call VBS, vacation Bible schools, all around. And um, when I, something else I did when I was young was I drew a picture. I drew a picture of God that I had a piece of notebook paper, I grabbed a pen, and I drew this. I don't know why I drew this picture, but I know I did, and I remember it, and I put it up on my wall in my bedroom. Now, this is what the picture looked like. Now, I drew this picture when I was not young. I actually drew this just recently, and it looks about the same as when I would draw it when I was five or six. But this is the picture that I drew of God, and I put it up on my wall, And I believe that God helps me remember this because this describes my relationship with God before I knew Christ. God was this to me. I knew him, I believed in him, but I just knew about God. The things that I learned at Vacation Bible School, the picture I drew on my wall, were all things I knew about God. It was all here. But I didn't know him. I didn't have a relationship with him. And while I was young, God was already working in my heart. The Holy Spirit was already working in my heart, calling me into a relationship with Him. But for me, my relationship with God, this was it. He was a picture on my wall. He's something I knew about. And maybe you're in the same boat as I was. Maybe it's the same for you. Were you grown up in Chickasha or in... Oklahoma or even in our country and you've heard a lot about God. You've heard a lot about Jesus. Maybe you've even been to church for a long time. Maybe you used to go and you don't go now. Maybe you still go today and you know a lot about God but you don't know him. You don't know Jesus. And that's what changed for me. That's what changed when I was eight years old. We moved. We moved to Ada, Oklahoma and the first thing I did Because it was actually in June that we moved. The first thing I did was go to a vacation Bible school. I was eight years old, and it was there that I learned about Jesus. 
And it was there that the Holy Spirit called me, worked in my heart, and helped me to see from my heart that God desired a relationship with me through His Son, Jesus, that Jesus died for my sin, that He rose again so that He could complete the work on the cross so that I could commit my life to following Him. I could put my faith in Him and He would forgive me of my sin and I would receive that eternal life through Him. On Thursday night of that vacation Bible school in June of 1991, the Holy Spirit drew my heart to give my life to Christ. And that's what I did. And I went from knowing about God to actually knowing Him and having a relationship with Him. And that's what God desires for us. That's what God desires in a life with us. It's not just about following, again, some set of rules or relationship, or excuse me, some set of rules in a religion, but He desires a relationship with us. So let me ask you this question. Do you know about Jesus or do you really know him? Do you know about Jesus or do you know him? That's the question today. That's why we celebrate today. That's why we do all of this. Is to share the gospel, to share the good news that Jesus died for our sin so that we could have the free gift of God. So that we could have eternal life through him. We cannot overcome sin on our own, but through Christ. We have that gift from God. So, if you've never put your faith in Christ, today is that day. I'm going to put a website up on the screen. This is a way that you can connect to us or contact us. You can go on our website, go to fbcchickasha.org slash commit. There's a form you can fill out, and it emails me and Pastor Michael directly. And if you want to know more about following Christ, know what it means to actually know Him and have a relationship with Him, we would love to visit with you more about that. We would love to follow with you and lead you through that process. You can also email me or or contact me in in other ways uh, through social media. And um, even if you want to leave a comment below this video, you can do that too. But however you want to connect, don't miss the opportunity today. If the Holy Spirit is calling your heart, calling you to a relationship with Him, a relationship where you commit your life to following Jesus, you put your faith in Him, today is that day. Don't miss that opportunity. Church, we are so glad that you've joined us today to worship uh, through uh, just Sunday school today, through the Word. We're going to have some time in just a few minutes when our, our worship service is online, and you can worship through song and through the preaching of the Word with Pastor Michael. I'm so glad that you're here today, but don't miss this. Don't miss what the Word is calling us to do, what through Paul the Holy Spirit is teaching us. There's a path to take. And then it's about knowing Jesus. It's about the life that God has for us and not just knowing about Him. So what will you do today? Church family, we love you. We are praying for you as always throughout this whole crisis. If there's something that you need, if there's a need that you know of, contact us so that we can help equip the church to meet that need. God bless you. Have a great Sunday with your family. Have a great day today. And may the, may the power of God lead us to advance the gospel of Christ through the work of the Holy Spirit for His kingdom.